My first memory was being a Brownie leader for the Institute of Logopedics in Wichita, which had multiple handicapped children. And these children had never camped, never, never been really out of the facility. Um, so I actually set up a, a troop of them and then did what a normal Brownie troop would do. And the most exciting part was some of these children couldn't talk and when they would say a word, we learned how to just wait until they got through. It was, it was really fulfilling. There was no moment in my life that uh, got me to do volunteer work and to do community work. Um, my mother was always doing that, so it was just a natural thing to do. And the first thing, one of the first things I did was I was a candy striper in a hospital because I wanted to, wanted to help people. That was also good because I learned I didn't want to be a pharmacist. Um, and then it just went on from there. The person that had the most significant impact on my life was my mother. Uh, my mother was a nurse and before I was born she worked in various facilities. She worked at Barnes, she worked in Springfield. She was truly one of those women before her time that did all sorts of different things. And so she kind of, she taught me the same thing. And as a small child, she did things with me. Uh, we did all kinds of projects together. And, and she listened to me and we could have conversations which was really, really neat, especially as a child. Um, there were, as I got older, there were some things I would say, Mother, I'm not going to do this. And Mother would say, well, we're going to talk to someone else and let's see what they come up with. So it was, it was a very nice relationship. And then when I was out on my own and would want to travel by myself and work by myself, she was always there to encourage me. She's always, she's always encouraged me. It's important for me to give back and pay it forward because the world just works better that way. And if we don't do that, it's really difficult. And the thing that amazes me is just the small ways we can pay it forward. I remember being on a rush hour bus in Chicago and some lady got on and didn't ha only had a $10 bill. And she, you know, the bus driver wasn't gonna move. And she said, does anybody have change for a 10? And a gal in the middle of the bus stood up, said, here's a bus token. And we moved on. And as the lady came back to pay her back once she got her change, the gal said, no, no, someday I'll need a token. And I thought that was just such a small example, but everybody on the bus kind of joined in on this. It's everything. If you don't have good health, you don't, I mean, you can't buy good health. And without good health, there are so many things that you can't do, and with good health, it enables you to do almost anything you want to. I think Volunteers in Medicine fills a huge void in this community and also provides a great opportunity. Uh, the first thing it does is with this mission of taking care of the working uninsured, what we end up doing is the people that work two and three jobs but don't have insurance, we provide good health care for them and they can keep working, which is probably the most important thing that we do. I think the other thing, the volunteers, sometimes I think that volunteers get more out of volunteers in medicine than the patients themselves because it gives them something to do that they love. It, for some of them, it's something they've practiced all their life. For others, it's an opportunity to learn something new. I think we have the best mental health care clinic for them of any place in sight. And just for the community, I would like to see the community come closer together and in the medical field because I do believe that we have enough different organizations in the city and with the good hospitals we have, I wish we could figure out how to take care of all of the people that can't afford good health care.